Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to cover the decorator pattern. I know some people struggled, including me, to separate from the proxy pattern in particular, maybe even adapter and facade, although I think those are quite different. Specifically with the proxy pattern, the implementation uh, looks very, very similar. And uh, hopefully when I get to the proxy pattern, it will be apparent why those, these two are different, but I'm going to try to cover some of the differences in this video as well. Uh, no microservices example in this video, let's jump in, right? Uh, decorator pattern, what is it about specifically? As I interpret it, we want to go ahead and extend the original thing and give it some additional responsibility or functionality. And we want to do so in a very, very composable way. So we can mix and match uh, the responsibilities and functionalities that we add to an object, right? This can be done in multiple different ways with different types of objects. So let's go ahead and first Cover, like what kinds of types of objects can we have at all and uh, how that's going to uh, look uh, different depending on what kind of object we're working with. So as a quick overview, I have an interface. I have a class as an implementation of that interface. This is where the base decorator comes in. And uh, to me, uh, this is maybe a little bit like a verbose gunk that you have to write in order to make it work. Kind of like if you were using lambdas and uh, you'd had to write the interface and then the class implementation in order to use your lambda where right now you can just like write it in one line and the, the C sharp uh, compiler will, will generate that for you, right? So this is that gunk that shouldn't really be here and I'm gonna cover something that a C sharp team is doing something about this. So in the near future, the, the base decorator where I'm kind of saying, right, so this is all the stuff that we can uh, override from the dumb data. And we're pa you, you will notice that we're pa not only are we inheriting from it, we're also passing the original one or the thing that we want to add the functionality into, into the constructor. And this will be apparent why we're doing this in a second, right? But this is all the sort of the scaffolding. So I position myself in the middle. To kind of say right we proxy everything to the default one however if we then subclass the base decorator we can pick and choose what we want to override without having to rewrite uh, the sort of the default functionality if we haven't touched it right so this is when we have the injected functionality this is when we uh, inherit from the base decorator right again we put the original object into the constructor and uh, the main difference here between the proxy pattern is that the thing that we're putting in to the decorator to be decorated, or we're choosing this decorator to decorate an object that we already know at runtime. And the fact that we're putting it in a constructor, right, we're passing it from the outside into the decorator, means that we know what we're putting in there, right? With a proxy pattern, we don't necessarily know what we're spe specifically what we're uh, accessing. Like that's the proxy is guarding that thing. Here, we know what we're putting in here. Once we got the thing that we want to uh, extend, we go ahead and hook into the particular part that we want to override and attach the functionality into it. Now, it's important for the attached functionality to be private. You do not want to be consuming the particular decorator, right? The decorator should be hidden inside of it and you should still be consuming the interface. You don't really need an interface. Uh, this is just kind of to make it a little bit simpler to understand that you are com communicating with the contract and you are not communicating with the class or the particular decorator, right? Do not put public methods on there. Otherwise, it, you will have to choose at compile time which type you're using and then hook into that particular function that you are basically giving the item data that ability to do something. Uh, that's a compile time decision. You have to manually write it out. What you want to do is you want to make the decorator pattern to be configurable at runtime. So at runtime, you should be able to select some options or send some data and that will take your original object. And depending on what you've selected, it may throw some decorators on top of it. So the, the real thing that we're after is basically chaining these uh, decorators and being able to, same as in the Excel box, we might have a text view decorator. So how we render the text and then we want to make it bold. So then we put the bold decorator on top of it and we can reuse it for all the other cells or we can put the italic text on top of it as well. So we're wrapping the text rendering function or something like that to basically chain reusable ways of rendering the text, right? So hopefully that paints the picture quite well. In this example, we're going to do something else. So that example was dumb data. We're kind of hooking in into field accessors and uh, kind of putting ourselves in the middle here. Uh, same thing here, we want to do something and this is particularly to highlight the compos composability. 
uh, again, we have an interface where we want to do something. Uh, we have a class, a doer. So this is the particular uh, implementation. And in this scenario, as I said previously, you, like you don't really need an interface and uh, this gunk right here, you, you, you can have it, but it's not mandatory, right? It can make things a little bit easier. So in this case, I'm not doing that. I'm uh, basically just creating a doer. So the doer is going to do something. And then another thing inherits from the I do something. We pass the I do something in here and then we do something and then we do another thing because that's what another thing does. We do the something and then we do another thing. And then we can do something in addition, right? We, again, we do the original thing and then uh, in addition to doing something, we do the in addition task, right? So the composability comes here. So, so sorry for scrolling around here, but let's count it. Like we got the one, we got the two and we got the three. So we got three things that we can do. We can just do this thing or we can decorate the original thing with another thing. We can decorate the original thing with addition or we can start combining them, right? So first we initiate the doer and then we do something. So let's, let me run this and here you can see the results. We initiate the doer, we do something and then this is kind of like to separate it. Then we wrapped the doer in the another thing and now we have another thing to do. And then we do something on here. And as soon as we trigger the something, we again, we trigger the original something on the doer and we do the another thing. Now we do something in addition to the original doer. We trigger the something again, we do the original something, but instead of doing another thing, we just wrap it in the uh, in addition, right? And this can be controlled at runtime. This is the intent of it as well. So uh, this should be determined by some kind of input. So fill out a form or uh, you select some options and now your API returns different data or your UI renders different things, right? So this is where we have another thing to do and we wrap it in the addition. So in addition, we have another thing to do, right? So something, another thing to do in addition. And then again, we can reuse this where we have the in addition thing, we put it into another thing and then we have another thing in addition thing to do, right? So right there. So you can see how you can basically start composing these things in different orders. If the order matters, I would say don't make the order matter, although it might, but that's just an example of how composable these things become, right? And if you sort of break the pattern of putting the original object inside of the decorator, if you just try to use it with inheritance, it will be hard to move past this layer into this where you can essentially extend another thing with the in addition, right? And that's the thing that you're going to lose if you don't put it through the constructor. So, I mean, that's pretty much that. Uh, let's take a look at a real world example where you have the I distributed cache interface, a well-known cache caching interface uh, that Microsoft provide you with it for your implementations. If you don't know what the distributed part of the cache means, it's the fact that the interface requires you to work with byte arrays. Byte arrays are the raw data. And what that means, if you have an object reference to something, it forces you to serialize that into a byte array, it breaking the reference that means it's no longer tied to a particular region in memory. So even if you have a in-memory cache on the local computer, the interface forces that disconnect. So if you replace it with the actual distributed cache where you have to make a remote call, uh, you're not gonna have any leaking abstractions of the in-memory database, maybe holding some references or something like that, okay? But anyway, uh, in the key, key prefixed hash, what we're going to do, let's say we have a database where we have orders and we have products. Both of them have integer IDs and they all start from zero. So now they have overlapping IDs. Let's say we want to cache orders and uh, products. So what we do is we create a I distribute cache with a prefix, right? So now we hold the prefix for everything that we read and write. So if we have an order cache, we prefix every ID with order underscore ID. So then every time we want to get a cached order, we go to that place. If we want to get a cached product, we prefix it with a product. So now we have the original cache. However, depending on what data we're getting, we're using a dif different prefix. So we're decorating our original cache with the functionality of prefixing all the keys. Now you can take this further. You can have two additional strategies. So let's say retries. So you can use a library like poly 
So uh, any request that you make, anything that fails, if it throws an exception, how many times you want to retry it and stuff like that, you can wrap the key prefixed cache or you can wrap just the I distributed cache in that retry cache. And now every time you make a call to your cache, if it fails, you retry it and so on and so forth, right? And you can interchange. So do you want the, the key prefix to happen first? And do you want the retry to come later? So it depends what order you put it in. Another strategy that you can utilize here is fallback. So let's say we wrap the I distributed cache in a fallback cache. That means what we're going to supply in the constructor is two I distributed caches. The first one will be the original one. The second one will be like an in-memory one, right? So if we fail to connect to our distributed cache somewhere on the server, if it like blows up, we can still start caching in memory if that's what we want. Without going too much into the implementation details, hopefully you get the picture. And for those three different, essentially additional functionalities the cache can have, you can interchange them, link them and combine them as much as you want. Now, uh, let's take a look at a more functional approach of how this may look like when you do with functions. Uh, this is particularly the strategy that you will see in Python. So they have function decorators there and they work very nicely there compared to C Sharp where I'm kind of like forcing a functional way because C Sharp is like multi-paradigm and you can do a lot of things, but uh, you won't generally see something like this, but this is just an example. We have a simple add function, right? Uh, no problem. We then have a decorator for the function where if we put the function through this decorator, it will give it some additional functionality. So right now it has a side effect of just printing something that happens inside of it. We have the print result. If we put our add function inside the print result, we receive our original function, right? And then we wrap it in another function where we still accept the two parameters A and B. We grab the result, we print it out, and then we return the result. So it's as if nothing happened, but now we actually print the result. We can also have square, whatever operation you perform first with the two numbers and then you get back a number, you can now square it. We have the function, we execute the result and then we multiply the results. Uh, this is what, it's, what it can look like. First of all, we put the add inside the print result and then we have add and we can put add inside square. It will go as if add print square. So we're gonna get a print and then after that, we're going to get a square. So let me run this inside is the first where we just add, where we do the print result and then add. The second one is the add print square. So we first we add, then we print the 10 and then we square where after I dump it so we can still see that it's 10 by 10 is 100, right? So it's still squaring at the end. And then obviously we change the order around because the order can matter sometimes we add square and then print. So we no longer need to dump after because that's what it's going to return on to the outside. Hopefully you understand the decorator pattern a little bit better now. Uh, coming back to the example where I said that this is sort of gunk around uh, your classes to kind of make it a little bit easier to use kind of like if you had to write interfaces and classes for lambdas, they wouldn't be what they are, just like inline functions and then the compiler takes care of creating the rest. Uh, what we have uh, here is the C-sharp team working on a roles feature and extension interfaces and static inference members. The discussion has been going on since 2018 and this is a really cool feature. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully it comes in uh, C-sharp 10. You, know, uh, you can always be hopeful, but essentially what it is, a very simple implementation of the decorator pattern where it kind of like uh, takes away the need for that gunk as well as changing the way that you will really think about objects and how you give them functionality. And I, I really like this uh, change as well as because it's the data context interaction model where it should James Com Coplin talks about a lot. I recommend you go watch some of his presentations on it. Let's go over what this change is about. We get a data object, same as in our scenario where we have the dumb data. This is the same scenario. They just have a data object. I just call it dumb data in order to highlight that it shouldn't have any functionality. It's not doing anything. It is just representation of information. And the concept of the role is that we want to add or inject some functionality into it. And if you look here, you can see that we can specify new properties or it's potentially be new functions and we have access to the original scope of the data object. So we do not need to pass the instance in and at the moment what we can't do is we can't cast a parent to a child type. This is where it will break that sort of thinking. It will break that sort of thinking where the child can only be cast to the parent and rather right now we have data that can play a certain role. 
Another part of this change is that you can specify an interface for your role. So really the role can implement the same interface that the data object has that you're extending, making these infinitely chainable. So in the concept of roles, you do not specifically want to mix roles. Maybe you do. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I think you only want to play one role at a time to not make things confusing, but this could potentially make the decorator pattern a lot more easier to implement without a bunch of gunk that we would have to write ourselves here. Whoa, hold up. Look, this is the stuff I used to torture myself on the weekends. Now, it takes time to digest this and package it up into these videos. So if you did enjoy the content, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you want to be part of the community that I'm building, make sure to join my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays, 6 o'clock London time. I have also opened up a merch store. So if you do want to support me, don't just donate. Buy from there. Links to all of that and my other social media are in the description. Hope to see you again and have a good day.